What's up, everybody? Matt Kajeski here, back again with the Odd Shopper channel. And today we're talking college football betting, conference championship weekend. We're talking the Saturday slate. We'll get through all the conference championship games on the Saturday. But before we get started, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live. We're also brought to you by BetMGM, and we'll talk about them a little later in the show. So without further ado, let's get into this. All right, breaking down the conference championship slate of games, we're going to kick things off with Kansas State taking on TCU. Rematch of a game we saw prior this year where TCU beat Kansas State 38-28. to That game had TCU with a postgame win expectancy of 64%. And since then, TCU has gone on to an undefeated season. They are two-and-a-half point favorites here, 61-and-a-half total. Injuries on both sides, but... The more injured team at this point is actually Kansas State. Adrian Martinez still banged up. He may play here. We'll see. A couple players in the secondary out for Kansas State since you're Mason, Kobe Savage. They also have been dealing with some offensive line injuries, and it showed up for Kansas State in their most recent slate of games. This team has now lost to Tulane, TCU, and Texas. No shame in the Texas loss either. Meanwhile, TCU has been able to achieve the undefeated season, and a lot of people point to the backup quarterbacks they've faced. One of those did actually come in the Kansas State game when not just Adrian Martinez went down, but we also saw Will Howard leave for a period of time and Rubley, their third string, threw one of the interceptions in the game. But ultimately, this comes down to stylistics here. Kansas State has shown a lot of cracks on defense, particularly against the run. They're 83rd in run defense. That's a massive issue against the TCU offensive line, which is top 40 in both pass blocking and run blocking. Excellent running back in Kendry Miller. And then you also have the ability with Duggan and now a healthy Johnston and Savion Williams and Tay Barber and Darius Davis to take the top off the defense. Explosive plays will be there against a secondary for Kansas State, which is severely banged up. Meanwhile, Will Howard, this offense for Kansas State has been solid themselves, but TCU has improved on defense. This team is playing better, 61st in run defense, 54th in coverage. This isn't the atrocious defense that some people make it out to be. So the play for me is TCU minus two and a half. I'm sticking with the wagon team. We've been backing all year to get us through the big 12 championship. Second game. We turn to the Mac fun game here. Toledo takes on Ohio Toledo, the two point favorite. This game, I believe is played in four fields. So it is inside total is 55 here. I think the side originally was Ohio, but there's a lot of quarterback news here. Curtis Rourke is out for them, which is what it is. He's the best quarterback in the conference. ACL for him. They're going to go to CJ Harris, but he, that's not the only team with injury. Daquan Finn tried to return their last game, but he couldn't play the whole game. He was back in a boot, and we'll see if he plays. Now, the quarterback situation for both teams is probably more impactful for Ohio. Tucker Gleason actually looked pretty competent out there. He's mobile. So is. C.J. Harris for Ohio, but you look at the rest of the team around C.J. Harris. Ohio's 100th in pass blocking. They're 54th in run blocking, 95th in run defense, 113th in coverage. This Ohio team's just not very good outside of Rourke. And Rourke, he's the highest-graded quarterback on pro football focus. Like, he has superman them to this game. And having a player like that leave your lineup, the downgrade is enormous. Meanwhile, Toledo, it's not just Daquan Finn. They have good pass catchers. They have a good run game. They also have a very strong defense. They're 12th in run defense, 17th in pass or 7th in coverage. So the lean for me is Toledo. I don't have anything in the game, but honestly, I might look at the over here as well. Ohio's defense is bad. Toledo's defense is at least shown cracks. And Toledo, I mean, we could run through their games. Man, if they just had some turnover luck, this team would have an even better record. It's unbelievable. They lost a Buffalo game where they had six turnovers. But anyway, to the over point. They've allowed some teams to score on them. This is not outside. It's indoors. That speaks to the over. I think the leans right now, Toledo minus two over 55. I'm going to wait on this. Ohio's taking a lot of money. And I thought that was the original side, but at this point, at some point, it's gone too far. So looking at Toledo, looking at the over, we will see. Okay, let's talk about our presenting sponsor, BetMGM. They have a phenomenal offer for you guys, and it is going to expire soon. So make sure you take advantage of this. First of all, the whole goal of the channel is to find edges, get you the money down the best way you possibly can. And one of the best ways to do that isn't even betting in games. It is just taking the promos that are available. And right now for the World Cup, BetMGM has a deal 
where you can bet a pre-game money line on any soccer team. Then if a goal is scored in the game, you're going to turn that $10 pre-game money line bet into 200 automatically. Now you might be thinking, well, sometimes games end 0-0 and they tie. Doesn't matter. BetMGM is still going to give you the $200. If you click the link in the video description below, make a pre-game money line wager on a World Cup game. You are automatically getting $200 back if a team scores a goal. So make sure to check that out. Link in the description below. It is free $200, so don't miss out. It is not lasting for much longer. I will say that. Coastal, Troy, the Sun Belt Championship. Troy is an eight and a half point favorite. The total is 49. Coastal's taken money. The over's taken money. That all is because of Grayson McCall. He's been out the last couple of weeks. <clears throat> Excuse me. He had an injury, I believe it was a foot. It's a lower body injury for sure. The prognosis was three to six weeks, and he's now on week four of this recovery. He is firmly questionable for this game, but obviously the most important piece of news here and maybe the most impactful player in college football against the spread. Coastal is a lame duck if he's out, and we already saw this line up around minus 11 in favor of Troy when it was presumed that was McCall would be out, but we're not sure. And to speak to this Coastal team just not being great without him, They've had a 15% postgame win expectancy against Gardner-Webb, 41% against Marshall, 48% against Southern Miss. This team should have five losses. They got killed by Old Dominion, killed by James Madison without Grayson McCall. They're not great outside of him. This is very similar to Ohio where he is he is so good as a player, he single-handedly wins them games, and without him, the team is lost. Troy is a great team. They're balanced. They have a good rushing attack behind Vidal, decent offensive line, competent signal callers, nothing special, but Watson, Deggy, whoever they play, presuming it's Watson, they run the offense and they win through defense. This team is 36 and run defense, seventh in coverage. If Grayson McCall's even limited, Troy's the side here. I don't have a bet on this. I don't think I'll have a bet unless we get definitive news that McCall's out, then I'll try to jump on Troy. Or if we get definitive news that McCall can run, then I'll bet Coastal, but it's a pass, just... We don't have the most impactful piece of information we need in this game. The SEC Championship. LSU takes on Georgia. Georgia is 17.5 point favorite, 51.5 total. Biggest news in this game is the status of Jaden Daniels. Appears he will play, but he is in a walking boot. For a dual threat quarterback, you don't need me to tell you that that's a concern. But it is. And the one thing I'll say is they did this once earlier this season where he suffered what was called an ankle sprain, but then he came up the next week and played with very little limitation. So this could be precautionary. We're not sure, but it's hard to really point to any advantages in LSU's direction. The best advantage they have is going to be their pass rush. We know Perkins, we know Ojulari. Unfortunately, Georgia is seventh in pass blocking, 10th in run blocking. Todd Monkins up for a lot of awards this year as the offensive coordinator of Georgia. And plus, they run a scheme that can mask those issues. They use two tight ends a lot, and one of them is just a woolly mammoth of a human being in Darnell Washington. If you don't know how big he is, holy smoke, 6'7", like 270 pounds. They can run him in line, and that's a great way to mitigate opposing pass rushes. You dedicate essentially a sixth offensive lineman except the weight. The guy can actually run routes and beat DBs and linebackers too. Georgia, just a different style of offense. It's incredible what they're able to do. The issue with a 17 and a half point spread here is the total is only 51 and a half. You're dealing with very little margin for error. And we've seen this in Georgia games. The second you kick two field goals, boom, you have the opponent covering the spread. This happened against Missouri. Georgia kicks four field goals in the game. Suddenly the score is single digits. It happened against Kentucky. You kick a couple field goals or have an interception or a drive stall out. 16 to six, you get scores like that. So LSU is the side I prefer, not because I think the Tigers are anything special here, but this relies on, on Jaden Daniels news. I also think the over is in play because LSU can score and Georgia certainly can score. They can score against that, especially the LSU secondary, which ranks 93rd in coverage. If Daniels is full go, I'll play the over at 51 and a half. If he is limited, I still may look at LSU just as a the side here in a low total game, but we'll see. AAC championship UCF takes on Tulane four point spread. The game is down in Louisiana Tulane, the home team for this conference championship. And it's a rematch in the first game. We saw UCF take down Tulane and John rice Plumley had 178 rushing yards. Well, thing is here, he is hurt 
injured his hamstring again last week, left in the second quarter. According to the coaching staff, he could have returned. Not sure about that. He's been banged up for a while now, and it shows in his designed rush attempts numbers. Against Navy, barely ran the ball. They lost. And this team has been spotty all year long. They have trouble playing from behind. They got demolished by East Carolina. They lost to Louisville. They lost to Navy. They should have beat Navy, but they couldn't use their running. Navy's a very, very low margin of error type team. If you have errors, Navy is going to beat you. So that happened. In the first game, I honestly think Tulane should have won. You you look at the game. Tulane outgained UCF 468 to 391. They averaged 5.9 yards per play. UCF was at 5.6. Just Tulane had two turnovers, UCF had zero. Tulane kicked a field goal from the UCF five. And then Tulane actually plays good defense on the year. They're fifth in coverage. That's where they really excel. But they're still 43rd in run defense. If they can just figure out this dual threat defense, they're the side here. And with the environmental factors, Plumlee being injured, I think it's even more viable to back Tulane. I hit them minus three, less interested in minus four, but I still do think Tulane is playable. Mountain West Championship Fresno State, Boise State, minus three in favor of Boise. This might move to three and a half. I'm seeing some juice on Boise. 54 is the total here. Not really too many injuries. Both these teams kind of peaking at the right time. Boise held a lot of guys out last week, but I think most of it was precautionary, so we won't talk too much. Helani got hurt, but it looked like it was precautionary as well. And Fresno's getting healthy at the right time. They now have Jake Hayner. In the first game they played, they did not have Jake Hayner, Boise, with a resounding win. Very tough to glean anything from that matchup just because the absence of Hayner is really where all of Fresno's main losses came. They did drop a game to Oregon State, but all the like losses that have been impactful to this team came without Hayner. With him, man, they've just been dunking on teams since he returned. Outgained by Wyoming by over 100 yards, demolished Nevada. UNLV outgained this team, but Fresno averaged more yards per play. So they've been awesome. Meanwhile, Boise's just been beating up on really weak teams. They were outgained by Utah State. This team was outgained by Wyoming, well over 100 yards as well there. They boat race Nevada. Well, Nevada has two wins, not really much to say there. And then going all the way back to their most recent decent competition was BYU. And BYU slaughtered this team. 532 yards for BYU. Boise was at 324. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to sell on Boise. Ultimately, this comes down to the line. And if Boise's going to take money, I'm going to wait for Fresno and try to get a three and a half here. But Fresno's the side I like. We'll back Hayner. Big 10 championship. Michigan, 17 point favorite over Purdue, 52 total here. Injury news, not very impactful here. Blake Corn played limited snaps last week, but really every other injured player for Michigan stepped up and played. And now they get. What looks like a cupcake. So, I mean, I don't even know how much we need these guys. Donovan Edwards, Schoonmaker, Mike Morris. Anyway, the big environmental factor here is the status of Aiden O'Connell. Very unfortunate, but he lost his brother recently. He's been away from the team. Says he'll play. I don't have anything on that, any comment. All I know is it's not good when you're starting quarterbacks not practicing. So, we'll leave it at that. Environment's not great for Purdue entering this game. You'll hear, people, you'll hear people call it a look ahead for Michigan. Aiden O'Connell is a little more important than look aheads for Michigan, looking ahead a month from now. Anyway, to the game, Purdue sucks on defense. They're 93rd in run defense. Michigan's going to run all over them. No questions asked. Meanwhile, Purdue, they run this little rinky-dink offense. Their pass rate is above 50%. They're pretty fast themselves in terms of pace, but they don't throw it downfield, just underneath stuff. Michigan's eighth in run defense, 31st in pass rush, fifth in coverage. No bet in the game for me, just not worth talking about. Last game, we've got Clemson taking on North Carolina. This is the AAC championship. I think Clemson's by far the healthier team right now. They've gotten back a lot of their defense. They've struggled even with those guys back, so I, I hesitate to say it's impactful. But UNC, my goodness, they're so banged up. They've got three starters in the secondary out. If Cam Kelly misses the game, we'll see. He left with an injury last week. They have multiple starters in the D-line out. So you'll hear that UNC's defense is bad. I honestly don't think it's that bad. Like, it's not good, but they're just so hurt, and the injuries have made it significantly worse. Like, here's their most recent games. They're atrocious. They lost to NC State, and that was on a third-string quarterback. They lost to Georgia Tech. That was on a third-string quarterback. Zach Gibson, Georgia Tech's player at the position at the time, averaged 8.1 yards per attempt. Anyone is just running up the score on this UNC team. 
Yuag Galilei has been bad, but he's better than Zach Gibson. He's better than MJ Morris. He's better than the opposing quarterbacks that UNC has faced recently. And this defense is better as well. I hate to say it, Clemson off a loss to South Carolina, but I think they're the side. This team is sixth in pass rush. UNC's offensive line has struggled. They're 40th in coverage. They've shown cracks at times like Wake Forest demolished them, but UNC Antoine Green's been banged up. Josh Downs is out here dropping win game-winning touchdowns. I'm not going to bet it unless it gets to seven flat. I'm not taking a hook on, on Clemson, but they're the side I prefer here. North Carolina just so injured at this point in the year, but that's the side. And that'll do it for us today with the Odd Shopper channel. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of these picks. If you're with me, against me, I would love to hear it. You can also reach out on Twitter if you would like. I'm available at Matt underscore Gajeski. Hit the thumbs up button on the way out. Subscribe on the way out. Those help us a ton. So if you've done that, thank you very much. Otherwise, this might be the end of the road for football, college football, regular season. But we're doing bowls, all of them. We're doing Army, Navy. We'll have it all for you. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. Make sure to check all that out. But until then, good luck, and we will see you next time. <laughs>